In this video, we show the surgical technique of dorsal only graft urethroplasty with prepucial mucosa for repair of distal bulbar urethral stricture. This 56 year old man presented with a 3 to 4 cm long urethral stricture of unknown etiology located in the distal bulbar urethra and proximal penile urethra. The irregularity of the urethra, which can be clearly seen at both ends of the stricture, correspond with spongiofibrosis. In the retrograde urethrography, the presence of contrast exacerbation into the urethral spongy tissue and penile venous system can be seen. Surgery was performed through a midline penoscrotal incision with the patient in the supine position in order to improve video recording. However, the dissection of the bulbar urethra is easier and more comfortable with the patient in the lithotomy position. The urethra has to be dissected and mobilized circumferentially along the strict side and several centimeters proximally and distally. This allows the urethra to be turned over 180 degrees and be incised in its dorsal aspect. Structurotomy is continued for 1 to 2 cm into the healthy urethra proximal and distal to the stricture until at least a 24 charrier caliber is reached. Thereafter, we measure the length of the stenosis and the diameter at its narrowest site, which are 5 and 1 cm respectively. We draw the shape of the graft on the prepucial mucosa, which is 5 cm long and 1.5 to 2 cm wide, in order to obtain a urethral diameter of 25 charrier. When harvesting the graft, one should keep in mind that the final length of the graft will be approximately 30% longer due to the elasticity of the prepucial mucosa. It is also important to remember that the graft suffers some contraction over time, especially in its transverse diameter of about 25%. The donor site is incised superficially to harvest the graft with the least possible amount of subcutaneous tissue in order to shorten the defatting procedure afterwards. This technique allows to keep the prep use and use it in the future in case a further urethroplasty is required. The graft is stabilized with 26 gauge needles on a board where it is defatted to improve the chances of neovascularization. During this procedure it is convenient to irrigate the field with normal saline to avoid tissue desiccation. After finishing the bench preparation, the graft should be almost transparent. Four cardinal stay sutures facilitate graft handling. The graft is spread and anchored 
onto the undersurface of the corporal bodies, overlying the dorsally incised structure with five ovicral sutures, offering a more secure bed and improving the chances of neovascularization. The spread fixation of the graft onto the albuginal surface also reduces the chances of graft, shrinkage and circulation. We can see that in this case the graft was oversized in length and had to be trimmed to its proper length. Final aspect of the mucosal graft spread and fixed onto the albuginia of the corporal bodies. The border of the open urethra is sutured with interrupted 4 ovicral stitches to the margins of the graft. The stitches have to include the urethral mucosa and all the urethral spongy tissue on one side and the prepucial graft and corporal albuginia on the other side. In this moment we are suturing the other border of the opened urethra. The last stitches are, are tagged to improve visibility. The urethroplasty is stented with a 22 Charrier silicone catheter for three weeks. The urethral stent is removed only after an integrate cystic urethrogram rules out extravasation. Large caliber catheters facilitate spreading of the graft and potentially reduce the chances of graft wrinkling and folding on itself, although these problems may occur more easily when the graft is sutured ventrally and therefore it is not fixed to the albuginia. After finishing the repair, we can observe that the urethra remains sutured to the corporal bodies. We leave a small suction drain for 24 hours and close the subcutaneous tissue over the urethra before proceeding with the skin suture. A slightly compressive dressing is applied to prevent edema and hematoma. It is our opinion that dorsal only graft urethroplasty is indicated for repair of distal bulbar urethral structures where the small amount of periurethral spongy tissue precludes spongioplasty which is necessary to cover the graft if it is suture on the ventral aspect of the urethra. Voiding cystiurethrogram was performed on postoperative day 21. A small extravasation was present in the distal aspect of the repair and catheter removal was postponed for one week.